Jill Magnolias tells the story of the relationships between women in a small town in America, but it really it's very much like the relationships between women in any town. And the Truby's Beauty Salon is a place where they are comfortable, they can share their hopes and their dreams and their fears and be supported by each other most of the time. Uh, well, the play is about uh, a group of women um, who are kind of just going through life together, living experiences. Um, Shelby kind of is like the catalyst, actually, of all of... Uh, every scene, Shelby has a new life experience to, to kind of, you know, for, for the women to react to and for the action of the play to go around. So uh, it's, it's, a really great, it's a really great play for just kind of getting a slice of life and, and feeling the realness of humanity in the characters. There's humor in it and there's also sadness and tragedy just like in normal life. Uh, my character Weezer is not really like me because for one, she's in her 60s and I am not. Uh, and she is very blunt. Um, she speaks her mind very openly, is very opinionated, and I'm, I'm a bit more diplomatic, so I'm, I'm not like my character very much, although my character has a softer side underneath and does care, and that is like me. Well, my character is Melian, and she's a, a mother, like I am, uh, with a daughter. I have two daughters. So, um, I guess I draw upon those feelings of a mother for a daughter, especially in the, the harder scenes when, you know, her daughter is sick. And, uh, yeah, she's a really fun character to play. I, I really enjoy, I really enjoy doing it. I love the southern accent, too. That's cool. See? Uh, do you know what I'm doing? And I know your mother is so happy you were able to make it in time, early enough to, to make the uh, festival. Oh, it is going to be the best ever. Uh, more fireworks, a, a nativity made entirely of sparklers, and a huge sign on the riverbank that says, I heart Chinquapin <laughs> Parish. It's going to be spectacular. And guess who the uh, Grand Marshal of the Parade is? Wayne Newton. <laughs> well, I would not miss a Christmas festival for the world. <laughs> Oh, Mama, while I'm thinking, uh, I've brought some white chocolate cherry cheesecake for our open house tonight. Mmm, that doesn't sound like finger food to me. Well, they are bite sized, like this. I know. That's okay. fine, I'm sure you know what you're doing. Nicola's been a great director. She's been really positive and helpful with feedback, uh, really reassuring and addressing any concerns or worries I may have. I've worked with Nicola in many capacities before. I've directed Nicola. So it, and actor with her, so now it's it's nice to be on the other end, and I'm the actor, and she's the director. She's very good. Nicholas, fabulous. Nicola is fabulous. She allows us to um, play around with things. She encourages us to be um, to try different things with her character. She's just she's wonderful. We're having a ball. Um, Lawrence Tuttle, my stage manager and I, we've worked together um, many times before. This is the first time that we've been in this range. Um, other times I've been his stage manager, but um, we are very much enjoying our partnership. Oh, well, um, Lawrence, the, the stage manager, he, uh, he fills in when somebody's not there, so uh, yeah, he, can, he brings out his feminine side, I guess. <laughs> It's been a fairly easy job because we got a real capable cast and there's not a whole lot of blocking stuff, you know, a lot of, not a lot of complicated stuff. But the truth is, I'm here for the sex. The, the truth is, there's six women in the cast and one director who's also female, so there's seven women here. So I could go on about being here for the artistic whatever, but I'm here for the sex, guys. Let's face it, I'm not stupid. I may be getting old, but I'm not dead yet. So, <clears throat> other than that, uh, uh, no, that's not true. That's, that's kind of a silly thing to say. No, it's true, actually. And the cast members are wonderful. There's six females in this, and uh, a few of them are brand new to Hubtown. So, that's very, uh, very rewarding. Great. It's a really good ensemble group, and we all get along well, and we all play off each other really well. Uh, I think we, it's, it's like we really are the, the characters in the play. 
Uh, all of the ladies in the cast are, are a lot of fun to work with. Uh, we, we get along pretty well. Um, of course, the most fun in a play is, is uh, the time in between, <laughs> in between doing all the rehearsals when, when you just get to hang out and chat. So it's been really great. That's actually part of the reason I was really excited to do this play is because I thought, wow, a cast of six women, that's it, no guys, awesome. So they, uh, the stage director, Lawrence, kind of kind of wrecks that. He's there all the time, just, I don't know, make sure we don't we don't get too off, out of hand or something. <laughs> but no, it's a lot of fun working with a group of ladies, that's for sure. I got the phrase paraphrasing, phrase paraphrasing from listening to Marlene and Brian. They use it a lot. And uh, yeah, there's a fair bit of paraphrasing go going on. And so we sometimes have little contests. They don't know it. I kind of create the contest as who's, who's been the best paraphraser of, of the evening. And uh, I guess really Sheila, Sheila Newell's won most of the contests. Others have only done so-so, but Sheila has won it hands down. Uh, that would suggest that she doesn't know her script uh, from the back of her hand, but other than that. Marilyn's doing exceptionally well. She's probably the most least paraphraser of the whole bunch. Any particular jokes? I guess, uh, well, uh, those of us who have to do hair are kind of uh, approaching that with a bit of trepidation. Uh, we're not used to the 80s style, so we're just going to do it as big as possible and see what happens. Strange lady with a strange dog. Oh, that would be way strong. Uh oh. That is one ugly dog. What kind of dog is that? Oh, a rabbit hair could be a... Collie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking he was something else, and now when I saw the poster, oh, that's a collie. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, give us strength. Be prepared, if you're coming to the play, to laugh a lot and be prepared to be touched by the friendship that you see and the strength that um, the friends give each other during some uh, difficult times. Um, well, it's, uh, so far it's going really, really well, but the cast is very, very capable and uh, I think it's going to end up being just an absolutely tremendous show. Well, a lot of people have heard about the, the movie Steel Magnolias, and uh, I tell them that there were a lot, more, a lot more funny parts in the play than there were in the movie, but to bring tissue for the last scene, because it's very sad. Uh, if you're thinking of coming to Steel Magnolias, I think it's a great play for the holiday season. It touches on a lot of great themes, family, it's comedic, it's funny, uh, it's great to have that sort of vintage feel with the 1980s. It's going to be a, a lot of fun, a lot of fun lines, and a really great time out, I think. If you like, uh, if you like things that are just kind of real and fun and have have a little bit of humor and and uh, and a little bit of everything, I think this is this is going to be a play for you. Um, uh, the the cast was chosen really well. Um, everyone in the play uh, is really good at just making it natural and and having lots of fun. So it's definitely, even though, even though there's some tragedy in, in the end of the play, it's, um, it's fun all the way through. And even at the end with the tragedy, you find yourself laughing. So definitely a good time. If you are interested in having an evening whereby you will laugh, um, be amused by some one-liners, and also um, have your heartstrings tugged a little, then Steel Magnolias is the show for you to come and watch. Mm -hmm.